What is this about text messages in a golf lawsuit? Well, it's honestly a bit of a long story, but we'll do what we can to explain it all. You see, for the longest time, the only golf game in town was the PGA. It was the equivalent of the NFL, NBA, and every other major league assembly out there. But then, out of nowhere, the Live Golf League formed out of Saudi Arabia, and they were willing to pay big to get some of the biggest golfers out there, which ticked the PGA off to the extent where they banned players who side with them from certain events. A lawsuit was filed and things are getting interesting. The lawsuit and the texts. Phil Mickelson, Bryson DeChambeau, and nine other Live Golf Invitational Series players filed suit against the PGA Tour after they were suspended for joining the Saudi Arabia-backed league. Not long after the filing, Golf Magazine's Dylan DeChere reported about text messages between 2017 Masters champion Sergio Garcia and Live Golf CEO Greg Norman. Garcia, who was announced as one of the many Live Golf players in May, texted Norman on February 11th with concerns about joining the breakaway circuit because of potential punishments from the PGA Tour. The Spaniard said in a message that it seemed like a lot of those guys that were loving Live Golf and excited about it last week now are shitting in their pants. Norman asked Garcia who was nervous, and the 42-year-old responded that he believed the PGA Tour had reached out to younger players and scared them a bit, and because they are young, I think it worked. Six days later, Garcia texted Norman, Hey Sharky, it's official. The tour has told our managers this week that whoever signs with the league is banned from the tour for life. I don't know how we are going to get enough good players to join the league under this condition. What do you think? Norman responded that the PGA Tour could not ban players for one day, let alone life. It is a shallow threat, Norman wrote. Ask them to put it in writing to you or any player. I bet they don't. Happy for anyone to speak with our legal team to better understand they have no choice of enforcing. On June 9th, Commissioner Jay Monahan suspended 17 players, including Garcia, from competing in the PGA Tour after they began play in the inaugural Live Golf Invitational Series event at the Centurion Club in London. 11 players filed an antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour in U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California to challenge the bans and other restrictions. The lawsuit alleges the PGA Tour engaged in anti-competitive behavior to control its hold on professional golf and that it ventured to harm the players' careers. The U.S. Department of Justice is investigating whether the PGA Tour engaged in anti-competitive behavior. And this was just the beginning of all that is to come. Court date decided. With last week's temporary restraining order decided, the courts turned their attention to the much broader antitrust lawsuit that will pit the PGA Tour against a group of live golf players who have been suspended by the circuit. Attorneys for the suspended players argued Thursday in a Zoom hearing before Judge Beth Laps and Freeman that the case needed to be expedited and supported a proposed trial date of August 7, 2023, in the U.S. District Court Northern District of California. It's important that we don't find ourselves in a situation where the trial comes too little too late, argued Robert Waters, the lead attorney for the suspended players. No reason in the world that working cooperatively we can't meet this schedule. The tour's lead attorney, Elliot Peters, argued that the proposed schedule was not reasonable or realistic and pointed out that the lawsuit will be an adversarial, hard-fought case. Peters also noted that August 7, 2023, is the Monday of the FedEx St. Jude Championship, the FedEx Cup playoff event. The commissioner and the other significant people from the tour who will likely be subpoenaed, that's a tough date for them, Peters said. Freeman countered with a modest adjustment, setting a July 23, 2023 summary judgment hearing and a trial date of January 8, 2024. The tour's attorneys also appear to suggest that the number of players suing the tour is dwindling. Carlos Ortiz dropped out of the lawsuit last week, leaving 10 plaintiffs, including Phil Mickelson, Bryson DeChambeau, and Ian Poulter. But during the hearing, Peters referenced dropping plaintiffs and the need for added time because discovery will include nine individual players. Dropped out? Saying he didn't really think it through, Pat Perez on Friday said he removed himself from the lawsuit that live golf players have brought against the PGA Tour. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, Perez said, I have no ill feelings towards the PGA Tour or any of the players. They gave me a wonderful opportunity for 21 years. I've got nothing against them, no hard feelings toward anybody. I earned everything I got out there, don't get me wrong. I chose to leave and I'm not looking to come back. 
I'd like to maybe play the Champions Tour one day if that can work out, and that's why I have not given up my membership. But there's no benefit to doing this. I have an unbelievable deal with Liv, and I'm behind them 100%. Only four years away from being eligible for the PGA Tour champions, Perez signed a four-year deal with Liv earlier this year. And in the two tournaments he's played, the 46-year-old has earned a little more than $1.8 million and $1.5 million, of which has come because in both starts, he's been on a winning squad in Liv's unique team competition. By contrast, Perez has earned no more than $1.2 million in each of the past four seasons on the PGA Tour while playing as many as 32 events. He's a three-time Tour winner, but hasn't lifted a trophy since the 2017 CIMB Classic. That year, Perez earned $2.9 million. Perez played 19 events on the PGA Tour this season, earning $1.07 million before leaving for Liv and owned a 70.6 scoring average that ranked him 106th. In two events with Liv, he tied for 29th at 8 overall in Portland and tied for 31st at 5 over in Bedminster. So what does this really say? Well, it says that this is a man who doesn't mind having a toe dipped in each side, if you will, and knows that there is a way to be both happy and make money with both the PGA and the Liv. If nothing else, he likely sees that the live is the short-term solution to the problem of his career and that the PGA via the Champions Tour is the long-term solution. He's never going to be a legendary player in either side, but he can continue to golf, make money doing it, and that's enough for him apparently. For others, it's more than that though, and thus, the lawsuit will continue. Antitrust Claims So let's get to the hard facts of this, shall we? Is this an antitrust situation? Ironically, it is. You see, while the PGA is very much like the NBA, NFL, and others in that it governs, oversees, and helps organize things in terms of golfers, the courses, and so on, a key difference is that it's not an entity that signs players to contracts. You never heard about player contracts before the live because that's not how golf has worked since its inception. This is very much a league where you only earn money when you do good or via endorsements, which we showed with the golfer we just talked about. The PGA helped make sure payment was fair for the events and the majors, but it was also the golfer's job to go out there and win it, which many did. The Liv does have contracts, but they're not exclusive ones as the golfers for the Liv happily note, hence why they're fine with their golfers doing both the Liv and the PGA. But the PGA clearly wants to be the only game in town, and thus the antitrust laws do apply here. We had a somewhat similar situation with the NFL versus the USFL, where the latter beat the former in court. Whether that happens here, though, is anyone's guess. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the lawsuit against the PGA and what these text messages between two of the people who sided against them have said? Do you think that this lawsuit will end in any way that is peaceful? Or was peace never an option with so much money and pride on the line? Let us know in the comments below and... We'll see you next time on the channel.